All right, last but not least in the cell uh, division series is going to be meiosis. There are two different types of diploid cells in sexual organisms, somatic cells and germ cells. And somatic cells, we've said multiple, multiple times, they're your body cells. They are diploid, meaning they have a full set uh, of chromosomes, two copies of each of 23, so they have 46 total. They divide by mitosis to make exact copies of themselves, and they are in every tissue except for reproductive tissue. Germ cells. Germ cells are the diploid cells that are your reproductive cells. They turn into either sperm or an egg. Um, so germinating reproductive cells are diploid. They divide by meiosis to make your sex cells, sperm and ova, which is another term for the egg. And they're located either in your test, testes, um, if you're a male, or your ovaries, if you're female. Mitosis versus meiosis. So doing a little compare and contrast, on one of your review sheets, you have a um, Venn diagram, and it's good to make a Venn diagram of this. Mitosis is asexual, meaning it's not sexual reproduction, where meiosis is considered sexual reproduction. Mitosis happens with the body cells, uh, the somatic cells, whereas meiosis happens with the sex cells, the gametes, their sperm and egg. They both share the fact that they replicate the DNA only once. They both only go through one interphase, one S phase, where the DNA is replicated just once. In mitosis, it divides one time to produce two daughter cells that are identical. And in meiosis, it divides two times and produces four daughter cells that are different from each other. The end result of mitosis are diploid cells and they have 46 chromosomes that are referred to as 2N. And the end result of meiosis are haploid cells um, that are referred to as just N, um, and they only have 23 chromosomes. And N is the number of chromosomes, okay? Haploid is the number of chromosomes in a gamete, and diploid is the number of chromosomes in a somatic cell. You have one copy from mother and one copy from the father. So you can see here in your picture of your chromosomes in haploid, you just have one of each chromosome, and in diploid, you have two of each chromosome, one from each parent. Meiosis is part of sexual reproduction requiring two parents. In meiosis, one diploid germ cell divides to become four. Are the end result, are they haploid or diploid? Haploid. And are they somatic cells or gametes that you're making with meiosis? Gametes. In order to go from diploid to haploid, meiosis involves two divisions, meiosis one and meiosis two. At the end of my, in, during meiosis one, the, you split homologous pairs of chromosomes. So homologous pairs, it's like the X's that are together and you split those apart. And in mitos meiosis two, you split apart the sister chromatids or the individual halves of the X's. So time to name the phases, meiosis one through meiosis two. If he calls it a meiotic division, then it is a meiosis or if it's mitotic division without the E in it uh, or O, then it's a mitosis, okay. So up at the top there, um, you have prophase one, then metaphase one where they line up in the middle, anaphase one where they split apart, telophase one, they form two new things, two new cells, two new nucleus, then prophase two, metaphase two, anaphase two, and telophase two. During prophase one of meiosis, the nuclear envelope disintegrates, the centrioles migrate and produce spindle fibers. That is exactly the same as uh, prophase one of mitosis. The thing that's different, and that's why it's like a crazy font, is that homologous chromosomes pair up. So um, that does not happen in 
mitosis. The homologous chromosomes don't go next to each other. They're just in a row, okay? They're all in one single file. Here, they pair up with each other. And the homologous pairs cross over. Crossing over is when um, they touch at a certain part and the two chromosomes exchange gene segments. Now, they're not exchanging the same genetic information but they are exchanging the same stuff it codes for, okay? And so what I'm saying is, you know, if your mom has blue eyes and your dad has brown eyes and it's exchanging the gene segment that codes for eye color, then the segment that flops to the other chromosome is going to be eye color for both things but it doesn't necessarily have the same information. Your moms would have blue eyes, your dads would have brown eyes. Um, so it may not be the same genetic information on there, but it is coding for the same thing, which is eye color, okay? But that could be for any trait. In metaphase one, you have your homologous pairs lining up along the metaphase plate. The difference here between um, metaphase and mitosis and metaphase one is that the homologous pairs are lining up. So you have two rows of X's instead of a single file line. Now you have two lines. In anaphase one, the two homologous pairs are pulled apart to opposite uh, poles. And in telophase one in cytokinesis, they prepare for meiosis two um, and the cytoplasm is splits uh, and the nuclear envelopes form. At this point, telophase one, at the end of telophase one, these cells are already considered haploid because you split up the homologous pairs. Splitting the homologous pairs, so you no longer have one copy from mom, one from dad. Now you just have like one from dad and double it, the, you know, double the information there. Splitting those homologous pairs makes it haploid. You only have just one set of information, um, you know, one set of all 23 chromosomes and just a duplicate copy of it so it can split into another cell. At the end of meiosis one, daughter cells are already haploid because homologous pairs were separated. So two haploid daughter cells then go through meiosis two. In meiosis two, haploid cells separate sister chromatid to make four gametes. Prophase two is the centrioles migrate, produce spindle fibers. It happens again, just like in mitosis. My meiosis two is just like mitosis, except for the fact that you've got two cells going through it at the same time. Metaphase two, the chromosomes line along up along the metaphase plate, just like in mitosis. Anaphase two, the sister chromatids are pulled apart to opposite poles, just like in mitosis, guys. It's the same as mitosis. Um, the difference in the pictures is you see two cells here doing it at the same time, and you see the results of the recombination from having the crossing over. And in telophase two and cytokinesis, you end up with four daughter cells and they have genetically different information in them. They're all unique. Cytoplasm forms to separate the four daughter cells and the nuclear envelope, which is the membrane around the nucleus, that forms around the DNA. The genetic information on the chromosomes relaxes back into chromatin so it's thin and stringy and you can't see it anymore. And they start, you know, their normal life cycle. So each of the four daughter cells is a new gamete with genetic information different from either parent. Now there are a little bit of differences with uh, uh, sperm formation and egg formation here, so let's talk about it. If I show you this picture, is it meiosis one or meiosis two? I hope you said meiosis one. Why would you say that? Because you start with one cell, you have your homologous pairs lining up and you're ending with two. Is this meiosis one or meiosis two? I hope you said meiosis two. Why? Because you're starting with two cells. You don't have homologous pairs lined up anymore because they've already been split. You're splitting the sister chromatids and you end with four cells. 
at what point do the cells become haploid? Here's meiosis one on the left, meiosis two on the right. And if you label all these cells, anaphase, you know, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, uh, one for meiosis one and prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase two for meiosis two, then at the end of telophase one, you should go ahead and write down, hey, they are haploid here. So mitosis versus meiosis. Mitosis starts with a diploid cell, doubles all of the information, all of the genetic information, so you've got a duplicate copy, and then splits to have two diploid cells. Doubles the genetic information during the S phase of interface. Meiosis starts with a diploid germ cell, doubles the genetic information, separates it, so you have, it should say N there. Okay, you have two copies of uh, that. You have double DNA, but you only have one copy of each homologous pair from the parents. So it goes uh, down to N and then all haploid cells. The difference between sperm and egg formation is this. At the end of telophase two of meiosis two, you have four sperm cells if you are making uh, sperm. There are over 200 to 400 million sperm per ejaculate. Men make sperm their whole lives. It's a constant process and there are uh, just tons of them. They make four every time they go through one round of meiosis with one germ cell. But with the egg, during telophase one and telophase two, things don't split proportionally. One of the cells is larger, has a greater number of uh, organelles, cytoplasm, it's, it's just bigger, and the other one is little. So, and that happens again in, in mitosis, uh, meiosis two with telophase two. So you end up at the end with one large cell and three small ones. And the large one becomes the egg and the three small ones are called polar bodies, and they could be absorbed by the larger uh, ovum or egg, or they can just kind of disintegrate and go away. We have no use for them in our bodies. Um, the polar bodies in plant cells become endosperm, and endosperm is like nutrition that um, surrounds the egg, and it is like the flesh of a, a coconut or the kernel of a popcorn, a pop corn, if you're, if you eat corn or coconut or anything like that, you're eating endosperm. There's your uh, fun fact of the day. Only one egg wins per cycle, usually. And women are born with the number of eggs that they're going to have throughout their life, and then they start releasing them at puberty. And fertilization is when the male and female gametes unite. The fusion of the two haploid nuclei performs a dip, forms a diploid nucleus. So you have 23 chromosomes in the sperm nucleus. You have 23 chromosomes in the egg nucleus. And when they join together, their genetic information comes together, makes a full set of 46 chromosomes, one from each parent, into a diploid cell. That is considered one cell when the sperm and egg join together, one diploid cell. And then that is a fertilized egg, and it's going to go through the process of mitosis and dividing and starting to become you. Egg and sperm unite, and that becomes a zygote, a new life in one diploid cell. It's pretty amazing to me that we all start out as just one cell and then become 1.2 trillion cells. Meiosis and sexual reproduction guarantee variation and diversity um, in three different ways. One, independent assortment, which is that when they're lining up in metaphase one of meiosis, you don't have all your dad cells on one side and all your mom cells on the other, or your mom's chromosomes on the other. It's random. They line up wherever. It could be dad here, mom here, you know, then switch then again, or switch, it's, it's random. It's different every time they line up. So that makes diversity. 
also we have crossing over. So genes touch each other and change segments. So now you have a chromosome that has some of your mom's information and, and a chunk of your dad's information on it too. So that makes it different. Plus random fertilization. You don't know which sperm is gonna join with which egg. So there are three different things that cause us to all be diverse. And that is a really good thing. Diversity is a very good thing within our population. So hope you enjoyed your lectures on mitosis, mitosis and cancer and meiosis and study up for your quiz.